So here's a 16 core Cortex A15, is it? Yes. And uh, this is real chip? This is a real chip. Uh, the 16 ARM cores are cache coherent. So it's the first in the industry to actually have 16 cores, ARM cores, which are fully cache coherent. Uh, so you from LSI, so who are you? So I'm the FAE uh, supporting this product, the Axia product. So the product actually has ARM cores and then has data plane accelerators integrated in, in it. So what is the FAA? FAE. FAE, what is that? Field Application Engineer. So, so, that's, uh, so basically I go around supporting customers uh, with their designs, uh, looking at what the customer needs are. So I do you know, pre-sales, post-sales, making sure the product works for the customer at the end too. So uh, this is, L what is LSI? What is, what, is, LSI? what does LSI do? So LSI does, uh, I mean, we are known for storage, networking, uh, uh, products, and people know us also for ASICs. Uh, what's an ASIC? Sorry. Uh, ASIC is a stand where a customer has a design and they want a, pro a chip for that. So we do standard ASICs for someone who has a, a design and wants to make a chip out of it. Uh, so you were talking about catch, cash co coherent uh, is that the uh, cache coherent interconnect technology? Yes. Are you doing something special with that? Yeah. So in order for, uh, in order to run SMP Linux and if you want to run virtualization and stuff like that, you, you sometimes are sharing data between different uh, processes or, or threads, and in order to do that, uh, you need to have the processes all in cache coherent. So if a particular processor changes the data and another processor reads that data. Uh, the other processor is aware that the data has changed and um, and that so that's what's cache coherent among the 16 cores. Is that, is that what's called a CCN 504? Yeah, the CCN 504 is basically the bus that connects the 16 ARM cores. So the ARM cores are uh, in clusters of four and basically in order to connect all the peripherals as well as all the cores this is a, a, a the bus. This is the ring bus that connects all the cores together. So, is it is this this processor? Is it on the market? Yes, it's. Uh, we actually have customers who have uh, taken the chip and already have designs uh, being developed in. Uh, being developed. Uh, yeah. But not yet shipping. Not shipping. So obviously, any product. I mean, this is a fairly new product. Uh, you know, customers uh, do some pre-work on simulations and stuff like that, and that, and then get the board and, and things. So at, it's yeah. at the phase where they are actually, you know, porting all the software, yeah. making sure everything's working. And Could stuff. we go over there and see what you have at that booth over there? Sure. All right. So. Um, because it's different than what you show here, right? Yeah. Well, that's basically showing an evaluation platform. Okay. So evaluation platform is actually like uh, what you ship to customers who test? Yeah, for testing, for developing, as a reference design kind of a thing. All right. So can you describe what's going on here? Yeah, so this is one of our evaluation platforms. Yeah. So what's this? And basically, because uh, we allow multiple different types of uh, I.O. In interfaces and stuff like that, uh, these parts can be pluggable, so they can change the, the adapter base. So you can go fiber if you want. You can go cat uh, cat five, uh, just yeah. depending on the interfaces you, you want. So you know, due to that, uh, this like I said, this is an evaluation platform. So a customer can change the I/O configurations on it. What's what's there? Uh, what's this? Some more of the I/Os. Uh, you know, we have ways of actually. Um, the JTAG actually, so you can do single yeah. stepping, connect, so the JTAG connectors, uh, the serial ports, the USB ports, and that, so, you know, it's just yeah. an evaluation. Uh, but does the does this, what we see here, does that have anything to do with what could be shipping in mass volume, or is it only for testing? It's, this is mainly for as a reference design or a development system. We have customers who will take this and take part of the schematics cut it up and put their own recipe to it and basically send it. So it looked different, it looked like a, a 
uh, telecom equipment? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, go? as far as the chip goes, the, the chip goes into many uh, uh, data centers uh, in terms of the switches, routers, in the wireless base stations, and that. So, uh, so this know, servers. Uh, All right. Uh, so. So where, where does it go from here? Uh, now it's more testing and then shipping. Well, the, the, as far as the chip goes, I mean, uh, we, we, we have customers who are now in the testing phase, development phase, making sure that the product goes through all day qual and that when, once that happens, there'll be products being launched with, that, with this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you able to say that your solution is uh, best in the world for what it does? I would like to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes. I, I, was, I mean, it's all dependent on, on what applications we run. Obviously, our customers choose us because we add value. We, 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 have, we, we have ways of differentiating, and that's, what, that's how customers choose us. I mean, if everybody was the same, then there's no differentiation. What differentiates us is the technology, our virtual pipeline engines, and that, that's, what's, that's, that's what differentiates us. So, uh, and, and who are you? I'm Troy Bailey. I'm the director of marketing for LSI for our networking business. So, uh, LSI has an official roadmap, right? Oh, we have uh, certainly plans. We, we, we haven't published our, our, our future plans. We've announced a number of products. Um, and, but uh, certainly, you know, looking forward, we, we plan on um, you know, embracing the ARM roadmap, going to the A57. Um, our current products are, are based on A15, but uh, in the future we'll be using the A57 64-bit um, and continuing with, with ARM roadmap. So what else has been uh, announced in the roadmap? Uh, what is, uh, because not right now you're doing 16-core Cortex-A15. Right. What comes after that? We haven't announced any, any details on, on that, any of the specifics, but more and more, uh, bigger and, and more of yeah. them. I think as uh, the, even more cores is possible. Sure, sure. Yeah. I think as the networking demands go up, the, all the devices are handling more and more traffic, and uh, that's one of the beauties of multi-core is that you know within a similar power footprint, um, you know, without too big a increase in cost, you can handle more and more um, processing. And before you were using ARM, you oh, in your other parts you're mostly using. Which architecture? So the Axia product line includes PowerPC products, which is where yeah. we started. And we're still continuing with that. We're announcing some, some new products this year on PowerPC. And as well as adding ARM to that this year with our, our uh, Axia 5516. It's the first yeah. ARM-based Axia product. So uh, customers know exactly when they need ARM and when they need PowerPC for what they need, right? Is yeah, there a specific it, use here? It, it, it depends on customers. We're looking at, you know, it's a decision for them in terms of their tools, their legacy software, the ecosystem support, so it varies by customer, but we see a lot of our customers embracing ARM roadmap, a lot of our uh, competitors are, are offering ARM products, I think there's general momentum in networking uh, towards an ARM-based solution. So what kind of products is it? Like, uh, How does it look like? Is it, uh, does it look like this, or like that, or like this? Yeah, actually we, we find applications in, in all, all um, of those spaces. So in, in Access, uh, in the mobile space, it would be in, <laughs> it would be in the um, form of a base station. So for uh, data plane and control functions within the base station. Uh, as well as the mobile backhaul, where you're aggregating multiple base station signals back into the core. Um, so doing the data plane processing and control processing there. And then on the wired side, within routers and switches, all the way from small businesses up to the biggest data centers, um, they can use Axia. Again, say in a, in a very large data center switch, they'll have separate line cards. And uh, Axia can be used on the line cards for control of data plane uh, applications. So. Uh for example, in a base station, mm -hmm. there would be just this one of those, or many of those, or? It depends on the function. So if you're doing um, a control plane application, you may have multiple cards in the base station, and they'll each have an Axia on them. Um, there's some applications where you'll have multiple Axia chips where you need a lot of processing, or there's some applications, say you're doing some additional signal processing, you may include a DSP or a, a level one ASIC that's doing some of the DSP processing. So it's a combination of uh, Axia or Axia with other products. So uh, is the main advantage of using the ARM uh, architecture is that you can customize, or is it saving power, or is it uh, doing, s uh, what is it doing? I think it's a little bit of all of the above. 
um, because you know, we have the, the ARM uh, multi-core cluster working with our accelerators, so we're able to add our particular value to it. I think the ARM's history in, in mobile and uh, consumer has a very much a, a low power, a power efficient focus, and so being able to scale that up with you know the new generations of ARM, the V8, going to a higher level but maintaining that, that power efficiency. And then I think the, the uh, our customers are also looking at it from a multiple sources, openly licensed, um, standardized core that they can use from generation to generation without being locked into a particular vendor solution. And uh, is there some other like? ways that you can describe the difference between Power PC and ARM? Uh, is it the ecosystem? Or what do people want? Certainly, I think if you look at, at things like the roadmap in terms of um, going higher tier with 64-bit all the way down to you know uh, things that are replacing 16-bit, so uh, a, a range of cores I think is, is important on the roadmap, as well as things like the interconnect. So on this chip we used ARM's CCN, uh, CoreLink CCN 504 interconnect, which is how you tie the cores and the accelerators together. So having a very strong roadmap and a lot of people participating in the ecosystem means that it's a, a very solid um, basis for our platform. And uh, this is a big, uh, important part of the, the roadmap for the company. Absolutely. So, like I said, we've we've um, added ARM to our Axia roadmap, and uh, could see that continuing uh, into the future generations. And it could be millions of devices, or what? How do oh, you? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, we we we. Um, have stated publicly that, uh, that LSI Silicon will be in more than half the base stations in, in the world. Um, and so those numbers get to be very large. And uh, then you look in uh, switches and routers and data centers and enterprise uh, uh, computer uh, applications, it's millions of units. So that's LTE? Is it the weightless or uh, what's called the white space? Can it do that? Certainly in the LTE, um, also looking at in-building uh, applications within LTE. We have, we have um, uh, customers that are deploying Axia chips in their LTE, uh, both the macro cell and the small cell solutions. May I ask uh, your competitors, are they doing the same? Are they We're doing ARM stuff? We see a lot of the, the competitive base um, offering ARM solutions. So if you go across the line, I think a lot of people are, are um, adding ARM as, again, as ARM is, is moving up and becoming uh, higher performance and, and the interconnect capabilities, it's more, more applicable to the networking space that you know, previously was kind of the realm of PowerPC and MIPS and Intel x86 architectures. And that could be good for you, right? Because uh, maybe the ecosystem growing means uh, investments are compatible and it means a bigger market or what does it mean? We certainly see it working for us. I would say the the addition of ARM was, was heavily driven by customers, customers asking for it. It's not something we pushed at the customers, it's something that works very well for us and is, is an easy decision for us, but it's really something that, that the customers are embracing as a, a standard for embedded processing and networking.